Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I want to show you how to add a power button to your Raspberry Pi while running RetroPie. This will also work with Raspbian and pretty much any other Linux distribution that's based on Debian. But this is really towards the people who want a dedicated off and on button on their arcade machines. So first thing you're going to need is a switch. I rigged this one up here. This is a very simple switch. All it is is a momentary switch. You press it and it bridges the two wires. And I'll leave a link down below to an Amazon page where you can get two squid buttons that are already set up with wires to plug right onto your GPIO pins. All right, so let's go over the GPIO pins that we need to connect to. All we're gonna be doing is bridging five and six. So if you're looking at your pie like this, you're gonna count three down. One, two, three. Third row down, five and six. And I'm just gonna plug my button directly onto five and six here. Now when we press the button, it's just gonna bridge those two GPIO pins. Read the script that we're gonna set up, shut the pie down, and when you're ready to turn it back on, you just press the button again. So you can do this all from within RetroPie, but I'm gonna show you how to do it over SSH using a Windows machine. This will work the same for Mac and Linux, you'll just need a different application, or if you know how to run SSH from the terminal, you can do it there. We're gonna be using PuTTY on our PC. First thing I wanna do is go to RetroPie and grab our IP address. We're gonna move over there now. All right, so this is a fresh install of RetroPie 4.1. And really, the only reason we're going here now is just to grab our IP address. You can scroll over to the RetroPie logo, enter it, and go to Show IP. This is just in case you can't connect with just typing in RetroPie, but your Raspberry Pi and your PC need to be on the same exact network. I have mine plugged in with Ethernet, and I also have my PC plugged in with Ethernet to the same router. If you're both on Wi-Fi, they need to be connected to the same Wi-Fi network. You can open up Show IP. Right at the top of the gray box, in the middle, you will see your IP address. Take a picture of it, write it down. Just remember it because you might need it. We're going to be moving over to the PC now. We're going to grab an application called PuTTY. This will allow us to SSH into the Raspberry Pi's file system. Next, we're going to grab Notepad++ and a text file that I created. It's uploaded to a Dropbox account, so you can just download it, put it on your desktop, copy and paste these commands, and this shouldn't take more than 10 minutes to get this done by yourself. I already have my button plugged in, and if I press it now, nothing's gonna happen. It's on GPIO pin five and six. Let's move over to the PC now. Okay, before we get started, I just wanna give a shout out to Barry Hubbard, Hubbard? Barry Hubbard, that's what I'm gonna call him. He has a lot of great stuff, and he's actually the one who created this script. I did add a few things, and the only thing I added was sudo to the beginning of a few lines here, because you need root access to, to do some of these commands here. It's very simple to do. He actually, if you want to go to this website and copy everything down from here, you can. It works perfectly. You'll just need to add sudo to some of the commands here. Next thing we're going to need is Notepad++, and I recommend using Notepad++ on your Windows machine for any kind of text editing. It's amazing. It labels everything for you, numbers it for you. And sometimes when you use the built-in Windows Notepad on scripts, it adds weird characters after you try to save it. So definitely recommend getting Notepad++. And the last application we are going to need is PuTTY. Just download putty.exe. You can place it on your desktop. Double click on it and it'll start the application. No installation required. Down in the description, you can download this text file. It'll be uploaded to my Dropbox. Open it with Notepad++. This is everything you need to get the button working. And I have things numbered for us. It should be easy for you to follow. So go ahead and grab this because it's gonna be easy to copy and paste. And that's what I'm gonna do in this video instead of having to type out these long commands here. So I'm gonna open up PuTTY, run. My Raspberry Pi is still booted up, connected to the same network as this PC. And my host name needs to be all capital RetroPie. 
Make sure SSH is checked. If you try to connect with RetroPie and it doesn't work for you, type in your IP address of your Raspberry Pi. Click open. Yes. And I'm just going to snap this over to the right side here. We're going to log in as Pi, P-I, and our password is Raspberry. Press enter. We now have access to a Raspberry Pi from our PC. Let's open up that text file in Notepad++. Snap it to the side here. So my Raspberry Pi is still on and connected to the same network. It needs to be in order for you to access this. We're going to go ahead and install Python. Copy, paste, enter. Now one thing that I've noticed, I have a Dell keyboard that I cannot save within this SSH if I press Control X. So if you're not able to save at one of these parts, you may need to get a different keyboard set up. I don't know what it is, but my Dell keyboard just will not save. And to save, you need to press Control X. It's weird. Press Y for yes and enter. Next, when it's done, you'll see the Pi at RetroPie. We're just going to go to number two and install Python 3. Copy, paste, enter. Y for yes, enter. This really depends on the speed of your internet, the speed of your SD card, and how fast they're serving, or how many people are taking information from these sites at the given time. I've had it take like 30 seconds, and then one time I tried it and it took me three minutes to do it. So just sit back and relax. If it looks like it's frozen, let it sit. We're gonna install GCC, so we'll just go to number three sudo apt get installed gcc press enter it was already installed and it's probably already installed for you if you're using retropie 4.1 but i definitely suggest just trying it out and make sure it is installed finally we need to get and install python pip python pip enter Y for yes, enter. It's time to install Python Raspberry Pi GPIO package. We'll just copy this and paste it over here. Press enter. And it's fairly quick. Now we need to uncompress or extract that package we just downloaded. Copy, paste, enter. Done. Now we need to move into our newly created directory and we're going to cd. So cd rpi.gpio. Enter. We are now in the newly created directory. We're going to install the module. We're going to create a new directory to hold our scripts. Copy. Paste mkdir that will make a directory and it's going to be in home pi and the folder is going to be called scripts or the directory press enter we now have a new directory now we need to add the script and we can do that by using nano we're going to create a script in that newly created directory press enter from here might look a little intimidating if you've never used it before. We're going to copy everything from the hashtag all the way down to here. Copy. And it's going to paste it right in there when you click the right button on your mouse. Now this is where I was talking about the save issue. Press Control X. If it doesn't work for you, you're going to need to find another keyboard. I haven't found a way around it with my Dell keyboard. So control X, save modified buffer at the very bottom, as you can see, press Y, enter. We can test the script if we'd like to, but right now I'm not gonna test it because I know it's gonna work. It's kind of like buying a carton of eggs from the store and you don't open it up to see if there's any cracked ones. Let's go ahead and do this. We're gonna configure the script to run at startup. Copy. 
Now it's going to bring us into another nano window. We want to copy Python, Home, Scripts. This is just going to call that script that we just wrote or we copied down to run at boot. So we'll copy. And over on this screen here, you need to use your arrow keys to move down past the FI. And we're going to paste that right in there. Now we're going to press Control X. Yes. Enter. And that's it. It's time to move to the Raspberry Pi now. You can reboot if you'd like by going sudo reboot. And I do recommend rebooting one time. That's going to reboot the Pi. We're going to get disconnected here on the PC, as you see. So I'm going to be moving over to the Pi and show you that our button is now working. So I have the Pi connected and I have my pin on GPIO 5 and 6. Just a little momentary switch. I know the camera's a little weird because of the background of the TV, but you'll still be able to see me push this button and restart the Pi. It's going to shut it down. Give it a few seconds after that green light stops flashing on your Pi, you can press it again to boot it up. So what I did was I tested this over 50 times with the same SD card just to see if it corrupted anything. I tried it over 50 times. I sat here for about an hour turning it on and off just to make sure it doesn't corrupt the SD card. Now I've had really good luck over the lifespan of using the Raspberry Pi. I used to just unplug it, no problem. And only one time out of the hundreds of times that I've ever unplugged it while it's running, I had a corrupted SD card. So it's booting back up now. We're back up and running. We can press the button to shut it down. Now the Pi is completely shut down. I'll press it again to turn it back on, and this is the last time, guys. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe. And yeah, I mean, this works out great. You could throw this in your arcade cab on the back. You can use any kind of momentary switch that you'd like to use. I prefer using the momentary switches instead of an on-off switch, and those are the only tutorials I've made so far. I have another one on Recall Box. It's much easier to set up. But this works just as well with RetroPie, and a lot of people have asked me about it, so I figured I'd get around to doing it. Like always, thanks for watching.